that there's a number of uh, technologies that could be used to address uh, climate change. One is around developing new diagnostic tools uh, through agriculture biotechnology. Uh, the other one is around mitigating the effects of climate change, uh, both on fish, uh, in terms of fish breeding and making fish resilient to some of the e effects of, uh, of climate change, and the same applies to, to livestock. But also, uh, the uh, agri-biotechnology agri could be used in understanding the effects of climate change and how to then enable uh, agriculture to adapt to climate change. Well, one of the uh, examples, practically, is a case study that, uh, that was presented uh, in the symposium, which is around the development of water-efficient maize uh, for Africa, drought-tolerant maize cultivars. Uh, this is a case study that involves a range of partners, the SEMIT, which is one of the CG centers, uh, and five national programs of Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Mozambique, and South Africa, where cultivars of drought-tolerant maize were developed uh, in collaboration also with Monsanto uh, and the African Agriculture Technology Foundation. Uh, to develop these particular technologies, uh, what then hand ended up happening is that you end up with uh, cultivars that are at least 20% more drought-tolerant than anything available out there. Uh, but what is even more interesting about these particular uh, technologies is the fact that um, uh, the yields that farmers were generating, even in the absence of drought, were at least four times higher than under conventional uh, maize cultivars. The, the discussions in the current uh, symposium is that some are raising the, the questions around the need to ensure that uh, we pay attention to whatever safety, biosafety risks that may arise for some of, from some of the technologies, especially the fact that some people still feel that there are sensitivities with regard to uh, GMOs in terms of their biosafety. Uh, but other people are still saying that um, even with the new uh, uh, plant breeding technologies uh, that are you know, now arising, that uh, we need to be careful with them, we need to screen them very carefully, we need to understand what the risks that are associated with them are likely to be uh, before we simply deploy them out there. Um, that is a fair request uh, and I think it's worth exploring. Uh, however, it should not necessarily block the availability and access accessibility of these technologies uh, for food security and poverty alleviation. Knowledge management, communication and information dissemination is going to become very key for, for the FAO uh, to be able to drive um, a, the use of agriculture biotechnologies towards increasing or ensuring the increased production and productivity in agriculture. Um, however, the responsibility not, does not only lie with the FAO. Uh, some of that goes with us, the participants, in enabling the understanding of science and technology amongst our communities and in making sure that our communities become part and parcel of the dialogue in really improving the understanding of what agriculture biotechnology is about and how it could be properly utilized in order to manage our uh, environment, but also in, in order to man manage uh, agriculture and agriculture production.